Welcome back to another Thinky Cap Spotlight session where we interview amazing marketers on key topics of interest that the marketing community cares about. And as always, I'm joined with our co-host, CMO at Cheetah Digital, Richard Jones. How you doing, Rich? Howdy, partner. Now, many people have commentated that marketing is part art and part science. And today, we're going to highlight an interview with a real marketing scientist, Tim, Dr. Louise Vincer mm. from GSK. And we're going to learn about how they are thinking about zero-party data in their consumer health products division. Got it. And look, this interview is extracted from a broader, hour-long session entitled Building First-Party Relationships, where we showcase what more brands, retailers, sports teams, and associations are doing on the front. Uh, brands like PepsiCo, uh, Aeropostel, right. uh, the Football Association, Nordstrom, and Arsenal Football Club. The QR code that you're seeing right now will take you to that longer length, and at the end, we'll show it again. So don't worry, you don't have to rush over there right now. Uh, if you want to check that out. But Rich, what are we doing? Right, well, let's let's kick it off and take a listen to Louise. Let's get into it. So, Louise, um, could you introduce yourself and your role at GSK? Yep. So, I'm Lou Vincer. I am the uh, Digital and Marketing Acceleration Director for our UK consumer business. Um, so, people may or may not know that GSK is got split into multiple businesses. So, we've got pharmaceuticals and vaccines, but we've also got a lot of consumer health products as well, which are very much everyday um, healthcare products that you would find in uh, many supermarkets. <laughs> and can I ask you, um, just because it's not necessarily that usual, but you, you're actually a doctor, so a, a, a true scientist, and now you're in marketing. How did <laughs> that happen? A true scientist, or was at one point in my career, <laughs> yeah. So I am... Um, I did a PhD in physical chemistry, looking at drug delivery devices. Um, and then I got a contract from GSK looking at uh, actives in, in oral healthcare products, actually. And that was the start of my GSK journey, which I'm now 14 years into, which is quite a long time, to be honest. So many, many, many jobs at GSK. Um, and this is my favorite one, actually. <laughs> so that signals, you know, we've heard from a number of customers that have um, really been leveraging their own first and zero party data to increase the effectiveness and the efficiency of their media and advertising. Mm -hmm. How are you guys thinking about that at GSK? What are, what's your plan? How, how are you approaching and setting that uh, yourselves up for that? Yeah, well, we know there's obviously, you know, a lot of awareness of the, of the value that this can drive in terms of efficiency and effectiveness. Um, and we have a big focus on on both of those elements, but you know more thinking about that effectiveness piece at the moment. So really understanding that you know having the confidence that we're investing in quality, quality audiences is a big thing. You know, on target reach, are you talking to who you think you're talking to? Um, and then understanding um, you know what what message you need to put out there to engage that group what's the content what's the creative strategy what's the personalization elements potentially um so you know we know zero party data can really give direct insights into content preferences and needs um improving that attention and that relevance which we then know translates into kind of the delivery of more a, a more effective media plan and, and creative strategy so do you see the differences between your brands necessitating variations in your approach to collecting first party data? Yeah, I think you've really got to, you've got to look at, I guess within our portfolio, we've got lots of different types of categories and brands. We range from oral health, pain management, smoking cessation, uh, vitamins and minerals, uh, vitamins, minerals and supplements. Sorry, that's really corporate. Uh, vitamins, just normal people would call them. Um, so yeah, we have to think about, I guess the role that we should be playing in a in a consumer or a shopper's life and what they actually need from us because i mean if if you're thinking about using that data to you know speak to someone after a purchase you don't want to be irritating do you you want to right. reach them with something that's relevant and useful so first of all you've got to understand what if you think about digital experiences what type of digital experience is right for my brand? What what information is someone trying to seek here? What can I give them? What's that value exchange here for 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 them for in in return for their data? We give them something that's of use to them. Um, and then again, thinking about the how does that ongoing relationship have to play out? As you imagine, if it's stopping smoking, someone might need more support from a brand. Um, 
potentially more so than if it's uh, an oral healthcare product that's used every day. You may want to follow up with someone, you know, with a, a message about a new a new product or, you know, an exciting new development, but you don't need to have an ongoing conversation. They don't necessarily need that support from you as a brand. So I think it's working out what's that value exchange, what's the consumer need, and then setting out your data strategy and your experiences to, to, to play to that. So, you know, for, for, for many uh, brands, many organizations that have um, been seeing what's going on with the changes around privacy and, you know, Google announcing the deprecation of the yeah. third party cookie. And, you know, that's naturally made more people think about what first party ba- data do I have in house? What zero party data can I can I collect in my interactions with consumers across you know a variety of different touch points? But it's quite new for a lot of people. So how have you gone about setting up or creating a kind of a, that kind of culture of data collection across all these brand managers and brands? Because yeah. that's you know that's it's a new thing. Yeah, and it's still a journey for us, right? It's constantly evolving this space, and I think you've got to look at it broader than just. Uh, protecting your marketing strategy from the disappearance of third party cookies. Right. It's it's much richer data than that. And right. we're all like about being data driven marketeers. We need to serve people first. And to do that, you've got to understand them. And there's no more valuable data than the data that someone is explicitly giving you, right? So I think one of the things that we've noticed is, you know, someone looking after a brand, a big brand in a in a large market doesn't have a huge amount of free time. They've always like there's there's lots of touch points to deal <laughs> right. with already. Um, so the way we've set up is to kind of we can prompt the questions, right? We can give the pe- people the right questions to ask. And what is this touch point driving? You know, what's the behavior change we're trying to drive? What's the action from the consumer that we're trying to get? What's the data that's going in? What's the data that's coming out? And how do we leverage that? But we've actually set up some dedicated resource in house to do that as well who can then support um, the, the wider brand teams uh, in understanding, for example, thinking about Cheetah, how to how to use the, the platform, how to build experiences, help identify the right experiences for that brand. So in housing kind of more specialist resource to help facilitate that change and that, that broader journey across kind of the rest of the teams as well. And how has Cheetah Digital been as a, as a partner to help you in this journey of collecting all this first and zero party data? Oh, you're great. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's yeah. so like we are on, we're quite, you know, early stages in our journey with Cheetah and we've got, we've got some, some really valuable experiences live and it, you know, it's how do we, how do we look to grow um, kind of what we're doing across more brands by working out what's the right approach for different brands um, and really thinking about, as I said already, that, that value exchange with the consumer. Dr. Louise Vincent, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me.